It's been a long wait, but following the successful return of the Artemis 1 mission, NASA has finally announced the crew of the Artemis 2 mission. Commander Reed Wiseman, pilot Victor Glover, and mission specialist Christina Koch and Jeremy Hansen. This mission will supposedly be the first manned spaceflight since Apollo 17 to fly around the moon and back to the Earth, and it is scheduled for a launch in November 2024. To say the least, I am very pessimistic about such a proposal. Last month, NASA held the Artemis 1 post-flight media teleconference, where reporters could ask questions concerning the spacecraft and how well it performed. Most reporters asked questions about the heat shield, which sustained more damage on re-entry than expected. My question concerned the two crash dummies carrying Geiger counters and scintillators and other radiation detectors to measure the radiation environment during the flight. Measuring this radiation was one of the big selling points of the Artemis 1 mission. My question was answered by the Orion project manager, Howard Hugh. Here's how that exchange went. Thank you. Our next question is from Gerald White with GW Studios. Yes, hello, thank you. Um, there were three coronal mass ejections during the Artemis 1 mission, one on November 22nd, one other one on, on December 7th, and a third on December 9th. Uh, such major program events can pose a serious threat to the astronaut's safety, might even kill them. How well did the Artemis 1 building hold up against these solar flares, and what were the radiation detector readouts regarding proton flux and energy? Thank you. Yeah, I, I, I'm not uh, as familiar with you as, as those events. Uh, well, I talked a little about those radiation sensors that we had across the spacecraft. So uh, we do have radiation protection uh, within the spacecraft. Of course, we're measuring uh, the radiation we experienced on Artemis 1. That data will be very important uh, to inform us uh, going forward. I know more about those solar flares than he does. That's not very reassuring. One would think that they would have had the radiation detector readouts analyzed before boldly claiming they are ready to send astronauts to the moon. It gets worse. I did not know this at the time, but the day after the press conference, the crash dummies containing these detectors had only just arrived back in Germany, and thus the radiation readouts had not yet been analyzed. But I'm afraid it gets even worse than that. The planned trajectory for Artemis II is very different to that attributed to Apollo. According to this NASA press release from August 28, 2018, the spacecraft will first reach an initial orbit flying in the shape of an ellipse at an altitude of 115 by 1800 miles. The orbit will last a little over 90 minutes and will include the first firing of the interim cryogenic propulsion stage to maintain the Orion's path. After the first orbit, the ICPS will raise the Orion to high Earth orbit. The second larger orbit will take approximately 23.5 hours, with the Orion flying in an ellipse between about 115 and 46,000 miles above the Earth. Yeah, the problem with that is that such orbits would place the Artemis II right in the hearts of the Van Allen radiation belts for considerable durations. They say, well, the Apollo astronauts, they only spend a very little time crossing the Van Allen belt. Well, what's Artemis's excuse going to be? Here is what NASA's own scientists had to say about such a mission long before the Apollo program. This page is from the book Astronautical Engineering and Science, and was written by J.W. Keller Dole, 1963, of the Marshall Space Flight Center. Here they are talking about using a carbon shield in the inner proton belt. The resulting shield thicknesses are seen to be quite formidable, with approximately 100 grams per square centimeter needed to reduce the total dose rate to approximately one rentgen per hour. Consequently, due to the very large shielding penalty involved, the intense regions of the inner Van Allen belt will probably be a forbidden region for manned orbiting vehicles. To put that into perspective, the Artemis II only has 20 grams per square centimeter of shielding. 100 grams per square centimeter of shielding would be equivalent to a meter of water, and completely surrounding the Orion would make it too heavy for the SLS to launch. SpaceX's Starship, intended for Artemis 3, is said to have a solar storm shelter, but we still don't have any technical details on such a shelter or know if it is adequate. Nor do we know yet if its launch vehicle can even fly. With just the Orion on its own, the orbits proposed by NASA are practically guaranteed to subject the crew to a lethal dose of radiation. So what's this mission to be? Death by space radiation? A hoax? In all honesty, I suspect the mission will be cancelled long before it even gets off the ground. Here is a list of the Orion spaceflights. 
The first unmanned mission, Exploration Test Flight 1, was launched in December 2014. The second unmanned test, Artemis 1, which went around the moon and back, wouldn't launch until November 2022. That's an eight-year gap. And keep in mind, back when George Bush proposed the Constellation program, the first manned flights around the moon was supposed to be no later than 2015. Leaked internal memos are already talking about postponing the next mission to 2025. If NASA's track record is any indication, we can probably expect the mission to be postponed to 2030, and then cancelled by whoever replaces Biden.